truth, and life. Here is the Brother Leon Show. You better recognize. What's going on, listeners? This is your boy, Brother Leon. And you are tuning into another episode of the Brother Leon Show. We are going to go in here. Let's go. Today, I want to focus specifically on the men. I want to focus on the brothers today because there's so much of a push on how men are supposed to be, what is expected of men, how men are supposed to protect, how men are supposed to provide. You're not considered a man unless you do this, 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 and this. And then the crazy part about it is that That whole narrative is given by those who are not men at times. It's given by women. It's dictated by what other men have said. Who are not even living that type of life. When it comes to income or even morals or even integrity. So you have to ask yourself, is the image... Or is it reality? Because you can only keep up a facade for so long. And reality will come out eventually. The real person, the real man will come out eventually. And so today I want to talk about when good men fall. Because there are so many men who are falling In our sphere, in our spectrum, celebrity men are falling. And the crazy thing about it, when you go into social media, you go into social media and what you see is not even anything indicative of healing our men a lot of times. Because I'm going to tell you, man, the one thing that you get with men, you get generation. And there are too many men who have given up on themselves. There are too many men because they can't fit the shape in which somebody else has created, have now said they're not worthy of even having a life because they don't make a certain amount. Or they don't look a certain way. And it's crazy how society has put on us so many dictates. Added to the ones that are already there. Because as a man, you are expected to die. As a man, when you get married, the one thing that you ain't going to get, the comfort, what you got is a child. You're not going to get that anymore. You're going to have to be able to give it. You're going to have to be able to give that type of love and affection. You know, but as a child, you got that. As a son, you got that love. You got that affection. And a lot of times when it comes to affection, as a man, you're not going to get that. You are expected to give it. And the crazy thing about it is that nobody ever thinks... What happens if I've never gotten it? Nobody ever looks at the fact of what happens when I am in an atmosphere or I am raised in an atmosphere where there is no affection, where it's just duty, no affection, just duty. And so my, my, my interpretation of love is duty. And I am expected to do certain things. So the whole thing about affection, no, I'm not affectionate, but I do provide. So these are the type of men that are out here. There's also affectionate men who lack duty, who lack discipline, who lack in the area when it comes to provision. Are they still men? Yes. But it is so many people who have labeled men as toxic who have labeled patriarchy as toxicity 
And the crazy thing about it is that they forget that this whole structure was created by men. They forget that the structure and the systems in which we live were created by men. You want the benefits of what the system has created. But you don't want the men that created them. And not only are we seeing this in our society and other segments, we're seeing this in church. Man, look. We want the church to be PC. We want the Bible to be PC. The Bible was never meant to be politically correct because it was interpreted and written majority by men. All throughout the Bible, it's always been father, son, father, son. But it's always been a play on power. That's what it is. It's not about equality. It's about power. I want to be on the same level as you. I want the same power as you. But I don't want the same judgment as you. I feel like I shouldn't be judged as you. But I want everything else as you. I want the benefits of you without you being able to sit down at the table with me. I want the benefits of you without you even being present. But men are expected to die. If something happens, we always say women and children first. Men are incarcerated more than women. Men commit suicide more than women. Even when it comes to the circumcision of our sons, they do it without anesthesia. Seriously. So, It's a whole lot of things. And then they say we should not fight for father's rights. But today I want to talk to you about when good men fall. Because good men are falling in areas of business and areas of relationship. Good men are falling in Hollywood. I don't know if you're keeping up with the Will Smith and Chris Rock debacle. I've done two episodes that are already uploaded. I have a third. I might not publish the third. I might just, I don't know. I'm serious. At this point in time, I'm going to wait to hear the conclusion of the whole matter before I just go into everything. Because what I want to do is when I go into this, I'm going to go into it from the beginning to the end and paint the whole picture of how I see it. There's a whole lot of good interviews out here. And a whole lot of people are saying we shouldn't talk. But a whole lot of people have idolized the Smiths. They've idolized the Franklins. They've idolized the Wilsons. They've idolized the Carters. They've idolized the Grays, the Weeks. And because we made these idols call it celebrity couple goals, what happens when your couple falls? When you see their humanity. And so this is the reason why I want to go into this thing about when good men fall. Because as a man, you are going to fall. But the crazy thing is, are you going to get back up? You have to get back up. Too many men fall. But they never get back up. And that's the one thing that we have to begin to do. We have to begin to get back up. Seriously. We have to get back up. We have to begin to know on the inside. No, it's not easy. Being a man will will never be easy, especially being a man of color. Because of the added pressure and the added burden that is put on you from birth. 
And a lot of people try to ignore it and try to say it's not there and try to say their individual experience should be the total sum of what black people need to do and be. But a lot of times your individual experience, your individual situation is not the same situation for everybody. So how is it that you can say, oh, you need to just do this, 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 and this? Nah. It's hard when you're a latchkey child. It's hard when you have three jobs trying to make ends meet. But you are a man. Let's go in here. I want to give you scripture first. I want to give you Proverbs 24 and verse 16 coming out of the King James Version. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. And so I want to go in here and just give you some points and talk. Good men fall when they don't recognize their self-worth. And one thing that I want to tell you is this, is that you fall when you don't recognize your self-worth because now you are defining yourself by either what you do or what you have. When you are so much more than what you do and what you have. Seriously. Elon Musk is more than the money that he has. You are more than the money that you have. You are more than the position that you hold in life. But good men fall when they don't recognize their self-worth. And when you do not recognize self-worth, you will begin to sacrifice everything about you as a man. You will sacrifice your time. You will sacrifice your resources. You will sacrifice your peace. You will be the type of man who is always willing to please other people. And yet in pleasing other people, you do not find peace. And a lot of times the people do not even recognize the sacrifice. And they just say, oh, that's how he is. He's supposed to do that. And this is why good men fall because they don't recognize their self Worth. I want to go to the second point. Good men fall when they ignore the red flags in relationships, business, and personal. The one thing that I want you to understand and know is this, is that a good name is everything. A good name is more priceless than rubies. It's more priceless than gold. A good name means that you're trustworthy. And being trustworthy is a cost. Being trustworthy has a price attached to it. I was watching this movie. I I believe it was. Oh my God. It was was a movie that had Daniel Day-Lewis. And it was about the Salem Witch Trials. And I think that that movie, at one point, he said, look, I will do anything. He was talking to the priest because he was up on trial. They was getting ready to hang him and other people because they was trying to find out who the witch was. And they never found out who the witch was, but they killed all these innocent people. And so he said, I will do anything that you want talking to the priest. You can talk about me any other name. You can call me anything you want. But I do not want to put my name on a lie. And so everybody was asking, yo, how come you don't want to do it? And he was saying, because it is my name. And that's all I have. All you're going to ever have in life is your name. Money will come and go. Women will come and go, but the one thing that will never leave you will be your name. 
And so you have to recognize that good men fall when they don't look at the red flags in relationships and in business. I don't care what you believe. That red flag that you are seeing is there for a reason. If that person does not have integrity, if that woman does not have integrity, is that potential partner does not have integrity and you see their track record, they are not the person that you should be doing business with. Yes, the proposal may be good. Yes, the woman may have a body like Barbie. But I am here to tell you right now, You can't take and turn a red flag green. I don't care what you put on it. You have to be willfully blind. And a lot of times we blind ourselves with the sex. We blind ourselves with potential. We blind ourselves with the imagination of what we think it's going to be. What the outcome is going to be. And then when it doesn't turn out that way then we say to ourselves I should have known I saw the red flags and I ignored it why did you ignore it why did you ignore it that's the question that you need to ask yourself why did you ignore the red flag was it because of number one you didn't know your self worth Or were you looking to sacrifice certain things hoping that the outcome that you want will produce itself and give sustainability because of the sacrifice? And because you may make a sacrifice doesn't mean that another person will honor the sacrifice. There are many men in the Bible, many men who went before the priest And the priests did not acknowledge or honor their sacrifice. And they did not honor their sacrifice because of the way that they lived. They took it onto themselves because they thought, yo, this is for me. You supposed to give me sacrifice. Yes, I might be operating in the office of the Lord. But this is for me. I'm God to you. And that's how some people operate. They operate as if they are God to you. They're narcissistic and they use you and they abuse you emotionally and they will kill your reputation. And when they can't control you, they will lie on you and they will kill your name. So I'm telling you right now, as a good man, do not ignore the red flags. Be aware. Number three, good men fall when they pedestalize people who are imperfect like themselves. When you put a person on a pedestal, you are setting them up for failure because they are imperfect. They're not perfect people. And I think a lot of times we put people on a pedestal because we don't see the self-worth in ourselves. We don't see the greatness in ourselves. And then when that person falls off because we worship them, we worship the ground that they walked on. We are so enamored that they chose us. We're so taken that they have given us attention that we put them on a pedestal and we love them and and we admire them and we don't even challenge them. We don't even say no to them at times. Everything with them is always a yes. There's never no pushback, even if it seems crazy or unrealistic. Good men fall when they pedestalize people who are imperfect like themselves. So to do yourself a favor and to do that other person a favor, do not put them on a pedestal because when they fall off and you see the reality of who they are, it's going to put a bitter taste in your mouth. You're going to look at them differently. And then the crazy thing about it, some of them want you to put them back up there. 
They want to be that idol again. They want that worship again. They want that type of love that you gave them that was without challenge. The love that you gave them that you never said no to anything. Everything was always a yes. And there are some people in this life that you're going to have to say no to. No can be the most liberating thing that you ever have in your life. The ability to say no. The ability to stop people pleasing. And that is who you have to be as a man. You can't sit up here and try to please everybody. You will wear yourself out. You need to have the type of attitude. Yo, I am not going to let these niggas stroke me the fuck out. Because of people's bullshit. I'm telling you, man. Wake up. There is a reason behind it all. Let's go to the next point. Good men fall when they allow their appetites to control them. Sexual, food, vocational, financial, and emotional. Because the one thing about lust is this. Lust affects the appetite. The Bible says that when a man is tempted, he is drawn away of his own lust. Because the one thing about lust, lust is a fire that can never be quenched. It'll never be enough. It's like dry ground. No matter how much water you put in it, it's going to take it. It's like fire. No matter how much wood you put in the fire, it's going to take it. Fire is never full. Dry ground is never full. Lust is never full. So if it's a sexual lust, it'll never be full. If it's a food lust, it'll never be full. If it's a vocational lust, it will never be full. You'll never do enough. Nothing will ever be enough. If it's financial, if it's emotional, it'll never be enough. Lust turns you into a fucking vampire. Seriously. You'll be sucking off of stuff and it's not enough. Because when it comes to vampires, them niggas ain't never full. That's why they got to go out every night. Seriously, that's why they got to go out every night. Emotional vampires are never full. They always looking for a victim. And the more victims that they get, the better. And good men fall when they don't know how to control their appetites. That's the one thing in this life that you are going to have to have discipline in. Because too much of anything, there's no balance, you'll fall right into that lust. There's no discipline, you'll fall right into that lust. I'm serious. Not only am I preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. Because this thing has been burning in my heart. Ever since I read that whole thing, about Will Smith resigning and then being banned. Oh my God. When he resigned, I I just felt this deep sinking feeling. And then when they gave the ban for 10 years, I was like, wow. Because I love Chris Rock as well as Will Smith. I love the strength of Will Smith. When I saw him in I Am Legend, man, I wanted to be like him in I Am Legend. Most of my relationship advice and worldview has been from Chris Rock. I ain't gonna lie, man. I consider him like a brother, an older brother or a cousin that I never had. Because his advice at times in his stand-up is so priceless. Seriously, his relationship advice, I'm going to tell you this. He said this on one of his specials. He said that a woman cannot go back financially and a man cannot go back sexually. And I have kept that with me for a long time, for life. It'll be a part of me because it's true. 
He also said at times you are going to play the background in the relationship. Sometimes you might sing lead and at other times you might be playing tambourine. And I have kept that. Man, his movie, Head of State, gave us aspiration and inspiration that we could one day see a black president. And we've seen a black president. So when that whole thing at the Oscars happened, I was shocked. And I was more shocked because it was black women saying, this is how we want to be protected. This is how we need to be protected. And then to see the whole view of that whole night at the Oscars, when Will Smith walked up, slapped Chris Rock, and then you see the video of his wife laughing. And then the statement that was put out about her saying that Will overreacted. I didn't need for him to do that. It now cancels out everything else that everybody has been saying because now black women are silent. Seriously, we want this. But then in the same token, we leave him to the wolves. We don't even protect him. And this is the reason why part of my, my motivation behind doing this today is because I want you to see. I want you to see as men and, and, and open up your eyes. And open up your eyes to see that a lot of times, man, the people that you bring into your life may not be good for you. And we try to please and we try to entertain. We try to love on people that don't want what we're giving. They want it from somebody else. But they'll take it because it's free. Who the fuck don't like free shit? Even if you don't need it, you might take it because it's free. I'm telling you, that's a majority of us in this world today. Don't matter what it is. Yo, they're giving it away for free. Yeah, I'll take it. Imagine if it's a man. Imagine if it's a woman. You may not even like the woman. You may not even find the woman or man attractive. But because they're giving away something for free, you'll take it. Whether it's sex, whether it's money, whether it's companionship, whether it's marriage, whether the fact that they stroke your ego, you don't want them, but you want everything that comes with them because it's given for free. And they think that you love them and you don't and so to read that statement it cancels out everything that that man did because I'm looking at the fact of if you truly loved him and if you guys are building a brand a legacy you just allowed him to kill all that in a moment Was it worth it? You could have easily stopped him. You could have grabbed his damn arm. Yeah, you might have looked crazy stopping that man. But it wouldn't be what it is today. Certain projects being held up. The way the black people have always been portrayed in Hollywood. You got to look at what Hattie McDaniel went through to get there. You got to look at what Sidney Poitier did to get there. And then now people can say, this is what happens when you allow these rappers to turn into actors. The best of them can't even control himself. And now this shit look like the Source Awards. Because trust and believe, there's always racism in Hollywood. Racism has never left. Seriously, racism have never left and you as a black person in Hollywood, you got to pay them gods. You got to bow and kiss the ring. You got to play the game. And I don't care who you are in Hollywood as a black person, you're not all of Hollywood. If they decide today to blackball you, what you going to do? Seriously. If they decide that they don't want to show your movie or they don't want to give you distribution, what are you going to do? If they decide to to 
put your projects on the shelf. What are you going to do? Because you may have a, have ownership and have a production house of your own. But you're not all of Hollywood. Seriously. So you have to begin to look at the ramifications of what is happening now. It's almost as if comedy is on the chopping block. Let's cancel comedy. Let's cancel Chris Rock. Let's cancel Will Smith. I'm not willing to throw none of these men away. Let's cancel Jada. I'm not willing to throw her away. I don't like what she did. I don't like what Will did. I don't like what Chris did. But you have to begin to look at the ramifications of what happens in Hollywood to us as black people. Seriously, if they can cancel Isaiah Washington, if they can cancel Orlando Jones, if they can almost cancel Tracy Morgan, if they can damn near cancel Nick Cannon, and damn near cancel Whoopi Goldberg. You think Will Smith is above all that? No, man. They are going to make an example of him. Because they got to put the fear of God into the next fool that may want to try to act up like that. Seriously. So all I'm telling you right now, when you look at the Oscars, it was produced by Will Packer. You got to look at at the whole room. You have to look at everything. And how it that slap was it was seen by millions of people. And the crazy thing about it, they should have went to commercial when he stood up. But I like what the comedian Earthquake said. He said, "Yo, I'm gonna sue everybody. I'm gonna sue ABC for showing it. I'm gonna sue Will, I'm gonna sue the producers, I'm gonna sue everybody." Because the crazy thing about it, the pictures are out here, the memes are out here. This will forever go down in Chris Rock's life. He was the dude that got slapped at the Oscars. And Will Smith will always be that dude that slapped another guy at the Oscars when he was getting Oscar for best actor. When he he should have got it for concussion, he should have got it for Ali. But he got it for King Richard. And the crazy thing about it is that no man is eternal. Seriously. So if if now they're putting potential projects on hold, you have to begin to ask yourself, was it worth it? Was it worth it? I think a lot of times with the Smiths, they give people too much access to their lives. I think that dad going red table talk is definitely need to chop that shit up with a damn axe. Seriously. Because every time Will has gone on that dad going show, it ain't been good for him. It has not. And I think with this issue right here, it's already a blaze. You do not need don't need to add to the fire that is already present it's like you just taking lighter fluid yeah just light that shit up some more let it burn you burning with that shit and this is the motivation behind this episode today when good men fall because a lot of times good men fall when they are not aware good men fall when when other seed is planted into the ground and not only do you have wheat you have tares because the servants yeah they were good but they were asleep and so the master in that story that Jesus told the parable in Matthew he said no let them grow together because the men were like yo let's pick it up now some things you just gonna have to let ride and then you gonna have to let the reapers do the separating at the end time but for men today I'm going to tell you this we have to begin to be aware 
We have to begin to be aware of the people that we have in our life. And we cannot allow ourselves to put people on a pedestal at the expense of us. So I want to go into the next point. Point number five. Good men fall when their vision for life isn't clear and they drift aimlessly. You have to be intentional with your life. You have to make sure that you know who you are. And you have to begin in somewhere in your life. What is your passion? What is your drive? What motivates you? And you got to begin to make sure that you are intentional with your decisions. Because the one commodity that we will not get back or even be able to create is time. You got to begin to make moments out of the time that you have. You as a man cannot afford to waste time. And good men fall when they don't realize that it takes time to build vision. And good men fall when they allow their lives to drift aimlessly and not be conscious of the time that they are wasting. The one thing that I'm going to tell you is this. When it comes to your sexual energy, you have to, as a man, When it comes to your sexual energy as a man, you have to be conscious of who you share that energy with. Because sexual energy at times is not an equal exchange. You give something and you walk away with something. And too many men have given themselves and given themselves. And the crazy thing about it, you got to begin to think about it as an investment. An investment in which you want a good return. You don't want to have a bad investment. That's not going to yield you a good return. If anything, it's costing you. It's costing you when you got good sex, but you ain't got no peace with it. It's costing you when you done laid with this woman. You done had X amount of kids and all she wanted you was just for the kids and child support. Or all she wanted you for was just your money. Whether it be through child support or alimony, that's all it was. Because she saw you as a mark. And this is the reason why we have to begin to vet. And you got to begin to look at the red flags. You got to begin to ask the hard questions men. Because you can't allow your life to, to drift aimlessly even if you made a mistake. You can't give up. I know you want to. I know depression will put you in, in, in that state. But somewhere, man, you're going to have to wake up and shake yourself and be like, nah, this is not God's will for me to drift aimlessly. Because I'm going to tell you, man, if you allow your life to drift aimlessly, eventually you're going to crash and burn somewhere or you're going to go over the falls. I'm telling you, man, you can't have the attitude Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. No. Que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. No, you cannot have that attitude. You got to be intentional as a man. You got to be intentional when you're raising your kids. You got to be intentional when you take that wife on. You have to be intentional. Because women will follow your lead. If you got the right one. If you got the wrong type of woman, man, I'm going to tell you right now. It's going to be hell to pay. Seriously. Let's go back in here. Let me give you a second scripture. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to which destroyeth kings. And that is Proverbs 31 verse 3. And in in the beginning of that proverb, this was a prophecy that was taught to a king from his mother. The queen mother taught this to her son. Mothers have influence. Women have influence. Fathers give you life lessons, 
but women are the ones that give you influence. You get life lessons with your father, but you get the power of influence with your mother. Women carry that power of influence, and that's why a lot of times when a woman can take and weaponize her femininity and weaponize her influence, she can turn it into manipulation. She can sexually manipulate you. She can emotionally manipulate you. She can emotionally emasculate you. Whether that emasculation happens as a child or whether it happens to you as an adult male, it can happen. And then your confidence as a man is taken away from you. And then you're constantly put on a hamster wheel trying to run, but you're not getting nowhere. Trying to prove yourself, but you're not getting nowhere. Walking on eggshells, but you're not getting nowhere. Because she's emasculated you. She doesn't even look at you as a man anymore. You got to begin to look at the words that are being used today, like hypergamy. Seriously, you do not want to be a cuckold. You're good for other things, but when it comes to sex or even a real relationship, she's going to seek that with somebody else, but you're going to be the sponsor of her lifestyle. So I'm telling you today, Make sure that you vet the right woman and don't give your strength unto women or ways that perverteth kings. And what I mean by that is don't allow yourself to give away your manhood. Do not sacrifice your manhood. Do not sacrifice everything that makes you a man. Do not sacrifice your moral compass. Do not sacrifice your values, your beliefs. Do not sacrifice your dreams because you can sacrifice all of this and still not get the outcome that you want. And they still walk out on you and still call you a bastard and still say that you wasn't shit. And you didn't did everything except take your own life. And there are men who have taken their lives over some countless no good women. And even men. So I'm telling you right now. Proverbs 31 verse 3. Give not thy strength unto women nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Let's go back in here. Point number six. Good men fall when they don't have a love for self. And others pick up on their unawareness of it and it can become weaponized. When you don't have love for self and somebody sees that, they can weaponize the fact that you're ignorant. They can weaponize your insecurity. They can weaponize and use against you your vulnerabilities. So this is why you have to begin to have love of self, but you also have to have self-awareness. Know who you are. Keep to yourself and hold in your crawl, in your heart, everything that defines you as a man, your convictions, your compass, your thoughts, your beliefs, and do not be willing to sacrifice them. And even if you have been authentic and transparent with a woman, do not allow yourself to allow what you have told her to be weaponized and used against you. We see the example of Samson. She weaponized his secret, sold him out, and they blinded his eyes. Because I'm going to tell you this, when you're blind, strength don't mean a damn thing. And then they took his strength away. Because the one thing about it is that you got to see. If you can't see the enemy, you may be strong, but he has the advantage. And then when they took his hair, which was the source of his power, his strength, now he didn't have nothing. No vision, no strength. 
And the crazy thing about the story of Samson and Delilah is that he got sold out for silver. There are people who will sell you out for riches. There are people who will sell you out for opportunity. There are people who will sell you out because they want to be you. And they're willing to sell you out to the enemy. They will make alliances with people just to get in your spot, just to get in your place. So I'm telling you as a man, be aware. Be aware of who you are and do not sacrifice yourself. Number seven, and then I'm going to give you another scripture. Good men fall when they love and are in a relationship with the wrong woman. We're seeing that today. I'm telling you right now, we are seeing that today. I'm not going to lie, man. When I look at Devon Franklin, I'm like, you can't be as straight an arrow as him. I'm telling you that he is, he is what we aspire to be. Seriously. Devon Franklin, Russell Wilson. And I look at it like this. If Devon can't keep a wife, I'm like, yo, the average nigga ain't got a shot. I mean, he looks good, got money. And he's a Christian. Now, granted, I don't know what was in their marriage. I don't know. But when stuff like this starts to happen, you have to ask yourself, Lord, is it, is it hope for any of us? He had a good looking wife. And now his divorce is final. He was the one that filed. Most most women, they're the ones that file. But when men file, oh, it's different. I look at Raymond Santana. He was married to to Delicious. And he filed. As fine of a woman as she is. As fine as a woman as Megan Good is. I'm like... Really? This just goes to show you men that as good as they may look, you have to ask yourself, is there peace that come with those good looks? Because if that woman can't bring peace into your life, you ain't got no peace with that peace. I'm just playing on words. You ain't got a you ain't got peace with that piece of ass that you got. That's what I mean when I say you ain't got no peace with that peace. So you got to begin to look, man. Ephesians 5, 25 out of the ESV. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. The crazy thing about it is that we always hear this scripture used. When pastors are preaching to men, you hear this in counseling, you know, and then we could go into the whole thing about the duty of a wife, but I just want to focus on here because there are so many men who have married the wrong woman and then this is what is expected of them. And you're killing yourself for Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, 25. You're killing yourself emotionally. You're killing yourself financially. You're killing yourself and you ain't even getting sex. You're killing yourself and you ain't even getting respect. You're killing yourself and it's never enough. And this is the reason why we need to vet better. Because yeah, we are supposed to do this. But the one thing about sacrifice, there was always... Sacrifice is a form of worship. And if the person that you are with does not honor your sacrifice, they are the wrong one. Because the one thing about it, yes, you're made in the image and in the likeness of God. Yes, that is you. But some of you, you have killed yourself for the wrong woman. And she ain't even willing to help get you back up after you'd have made them sacrifices. She's not willing to even be there for you. She wants you to keep sacrificing. And after a while, 
your resurrection power, your bounce back power ain't there no more. And now you need somebody to get you up. You need somebody to, to say your name. To tell you to come forth. To take the grave clothes off. And they ain't willing to do that for you. Because they think that that is what you are supposed to do. There are too many men who are killing themselves in these daggone churches. Because the churches are teaching you to be like that with every woman. And they're not even telling you what type of woman to pick. If she go to church, she the right one. Man, please. Every woman in church ain't the right one. Every man in church is not the right one. Just because they go to church, just because they Christian, does not mean that they are the right one for you. And the reason why I'm saying this so strong is because we think that because we see sister serving on certain boards and that she's up on the altar or she might be preaching that she's the right one. No, I don't care what that woman does. If she can't respect you and honor you as a man and honor you as the head, then she ain't the one because the Bible says that the man is the glory of God and that the glory of the man is the woman. And if she is willing to turn that glory into shame and bring shame upon his name and bring shame into his house and emasculate him, Ephesians 5.25, you killed yourself for the wrong woman. And then you up here sitting up, man, you up here on your knees crying because you done gave up everything and she still leaves you and takes damn near half of everything that you don't work for. And now you left broken. And all you keep hearing is all the scriptures that pertain about what men are supposed to do. But I'm telling you, man, you have to begin to think. Because some of these pastors and preachers are setting you up for failure. Especially when they do not challenge their women to be accountable or responsible for their own emotional issues and even some of the bullshit that they do. You can't sit up here and not call shit like you see it. If you are a pastor, if you are a prophet, and you got these women just running on old type of way. Seriously. You just sit up here in church and don't say shit. This woman ain't got... This nigga baby, that nigga baby, that nigga baby. And you ain't saying nothing. And she's serving on the ministry. Serving in ministry with you. But nobody's saying nothing. But then as soon as you and her get married and have the first argument, all of a sudden now we got to go see the pastor. You should have been seeing the pastor because now you got to take care of all them kids that's not even yours and deal with all them damn daddies. But yet... <laughs> Y'all got married. Nah, bro, you need to vet better. You just saw that ass. And then a lot of times we figure, yo, she got this many kids. She know she knows some shit. Don't go off of that. Because I'm telling you, as sexually experienced that she might be, she might use that shit against you. And that's what I mean when I say influence. There's too many guys that have gotten whipped, that have gotten drunk off of the sex. Then the crazy thing about it, man, you end up sobering up and you done lost all types of shit. You know what the Bible says about drunkards? Let a drunk man, one one who's getting ready to die, let him be drunk. So if you're ready to die, then yeah, be drunk. But at some point in time, you're going to have to sober up. You can't live a life of leisure and think that the, the season will be night. Forever, it's not. And the sexual window is only open for a certain amount of time. And when that time expires, it's done. I want to go back in here and read point seven again. Good men fall when they love or are in a relationship with the wrong woman. So make sure that you pick the right type of woman for you. You got to begin to think generationally. 
You got to begin to understand that marriage is not only generationally, but it's prophetically and it's seasonal. The woman that you marry this year will not be the same woman that is that you've met or married in the next year to come or in five years. So when the Bible says husbands dwell with your wives according to knowledge, you got to know that each year will be a year of change. You got to understand and know that she changes in certain seasons. Let's go to the next point. Good men fall when they're willing to sacrifice everything for the sake of love, sex, or a woman. And I think I've mentioned this pretty much already. But what I'm going to say here is that you cannot be willing to take the knife and not listen to see if the angel has said your name And shows you the ram in the bush. But a lot of times we're unaware. That there is a ram in the bush. Because we so quick. To hold the knife up. We're so quick. To make that cut. To make that sacrifice. For the sake of love. For the sake of sex. Or even this woman that we want to stay in our lives. To keep her time. To keep access to her. You can't sit up here and make sacrifice after sacrifice for access. And a lot of us have. I have. But it didn't give me the sustainability or the outcome that I wanted. Because the one thing that I'm going to tell you, man, is that in relationships, you're going to come across motive. What is the motive of wanting to be in this relationship? You're going to come across the manner. What is the manner in which you're going to participate in this relationship? What is the method that you're going to have this relationship? And what is the message that you want to convey in it? The method, the techniques, the message that you're sending. The manner in which you approach it. The way you handle certain things. The motive. The reason behind it. Why are you sacrificing? To who are you sacrificing to? And for what? Because some of us have sacrificed. Things that we can never get back for the sake of sex. You have to ask yourself. How long did the sex last? When you count up the time in sex, how long does it last? And was it worth what you sacrificed? Because I'm going to tell you right now, brothers, there are women today, you can get on Instagram and see all the eye candy, see these women working out in gyms, working on their butts. Some women getting a Brazilian butt lift. Some women, they doing squats, all types of leg work in the gym. Learning how to twerk, pole dance. Just to get a man or a certain type of man. So I'm telling you today. Good men fall when they are willing to sacrifice everything for the sake of love, sex or a woman. So you have to know what type of woman that you're dealing with. What is she asking you to sacrifice? Is she willing to make the type of sacrifice that you're willing to make and if she's not willing to make that type of sacrifice then don't you make it if she's not willing to sacrifice what you're willing to sacrifice don't do it number nine good men fall when they knowingly make the same mistakes with different people at some point in life you're going to have to come to the point where you see yo this is the same old song This is the same old thing. I can't keep making the same mistakes with different people. It lets me know when men make the same mistakes with different people, either you're not seeking counsel to see where the pattern is or you don't care. And it goes back to the point you can't allow your life to drift aimlessly 
when we keep making the same mistakes with, with different people that's aimlessly drifting. Drifting into this mistake. And then we want to blame that person when all actuality is us. Seriously, it's us. And the one thing that I want you to understand and know, man, is this. Is that at some point We're going to have to wake up And know that we are the common denominator Yes, it's been different dance partners But it's the same song Where we begin To vet properly But also ask hard questions Seriously Number 10 Good men fall When they don't think generationally Or futuristically Of those who will come behind them. So you got to begin to think about. Those who are coming up behind you. Whether they're coming up behind you in your home. Or whether they're coming up behind you in a field. And this is what I mean about going back to the whole Will Smith thing. Because you got to begin to think about. The next. Black actor who may be nominated for. You know for actor of the year. You got to begin to think about. The other rap star that is coming to Hollywood. So I think a lot of times we don't think futuristically or even generationally when it comes to certain things. We don't have life insurance. We don't, you know, prepare for the day that we die. We don't have a will. And then the crazy part about this is that. Somebody has to take the burden of burying us. And that in itself is a burden on the family that nobody should have to bear. A GoFundMe. But you were such a good man. I think it's selfish when we do that. And I think good men fall when they don't think generationally or futuristically of those who will come behind them. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Now, you may not have a lot of money, but at least be able to bury yourself and leave something that is solid within your kids. Because if you leave something solid within them, they will do and make things happen and have sustainability in it. But if you ain't left nothing in them, they'll burn right through whatever you give them. They'll sell the business, sell the home, sell the property because you ain't put nothing in them. And because you haven't put nothing in them, they don't look at the value of the sacrifice. They don't keep it because they can't see the value of it. I look at my son. I gave him an exclusive limited edition PlayStation 4. That had it came out with the Arkham Knight. It was Batman. It's a Batman themed PlayStation 4. And my son keeps that because he recognizes the sacrifice. I told him, I was like, hey, yo, if you want to, you know, trade it in, I understand. He was like, no, nah, I'm gonna keep it. Same thing with the TV that I gave him. That TV belonged to my father. So it's his grandfather's. And he said, I'm gonna keep that too, because it was pop ups. You know, so he values the sacrifice, the sacrifice to get those things. And so he deems them as priceless because of what was put in him and what he saw. Point number 11. Good men fall when they don't vet the right woman to build a family with. And the reason why I say this is because you got to begin to ask the hard questions. A lot of times we as men, we fall in love with the imagination of what we think this woman is going to be to us. And so you have to begin to understand that you as a man, you need a woman who is going to be by your side when you are in the night season of your life. And what I mean by night season of your life is when you're in the winter season of your life. Because everybody is fair weather. Everybody is with us when the money is there. But when we're in between certain seasons or the money's not coming in, a lot of times these women bail. 
So you got to begin to vet the right type of woman if you're going to build a family. You got to begin to say, is she built for winter? Is she the type of woman who will begin to harvest and say, because when you look at the scripture in Proverbs 31, it says that the husband praises his wife. This woman is a woman who is working with her hands. She is providing and saving for the winter to come. She's not afraid of winter. And that's the type of woman that you need in your life. Men, a woman who is not afraid of the cold season, a woman who is not afraid of the dark season, a woman who is not, who will be there when the leaves have fallen off the tree in your life. When there's no fruit in that winter season. But she trusts God and believes in you and trust in you to know that this season will not last forever. And that is the type of woman that you need in your life, men. That is the type of woman that you need who's going to be there. She is the type of woman that you can sacrifice for. She is the type of woman that you can, can you know, buy a field. Because you know that there's treasure in that field. She's the type of woman that you can make a good investment. Because she's the type of woman that can come into your life. And bring to you manifestation. So the one thing that I want you to understand and know is this. As a man. You have to vet properly the woman who you're going to build a family with. And do not put the kids before the marriage. Marriage, then kids. I'm tired of seeing us as men knocking up women and then we getting married. No, let's get married and then have kids. And don't have kids and don't get married because you have kids. You get married because you want to get married. Don't get married because you want to knock boots. Because you opening up a whole different can of worms. Because the Bible says it's better to marry than to burn. And people are like, yo, let's just, let's just get married. And then you get married. And then all of a sudden now the fornicating years are better than the married years. Because all it was was sex. But even when it comes to fornication, fornication is a form of abuse. And the reason why it is a form of abuse is because number one, you go through the whole cycle. You go through the whole buildup. The whole buildup, the excitement, the joy of us getting together. And then you, you go through the second phase, which is the letdown after you done fornicated, violated God's word, after you done ejaculated, after you done had the orgasm and came, oh shit, oh God, now you're feeling bad. And now you're remorseful. And now you take and condemn yourself. And then you go back through the whole cycle again. The build up, the act, the shame. The build up, the act, the shame. The build up, the act, the shame. And this is what happens. And this is a form of abuse. Because the cycle of abuse is the same way. Because the Bible does say that he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. But the Bible says that marriage is honorable and all in the bed undefiled. And God gives us all things richly to enjoy. So you just can't sit up here and just get married for the sake of sex. There's more to marriage than sex. And a lot of people, when it comes to marriage, they just want the ceremony, the party and all that bullshit. But when it comes to the real marriage itself they don't want that they don't want the responsibility the accountability you know the authenticity the vulnerability the transparency they don't want that because the one thing about marriage marriage makes you naked marriage makes you more of what you already are on the inside and a lot of people are not willing to be naked the bible says that Talking about Adam and Eve, that the man and the woman, they were naked and not ashamed. 
For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his own wife. That is what Adam said. That is the family. Leave his father, mother, cleave unto his own wife. And so this is why I say what I say, man. You got to vet. Just because she say, just because she's educated, just because she look good does not mean that she is wife material for you. She might be wife material for somebody else. You got to be able to pick the woman who is going to be for you. And she can understand that life and marriage are prophetic and seasonal and generational. And if she can't think prophetically, if she can't think generationally, if she can't think and see that life is seasonal, You don't need her. Trust. I don't care. I don't give a fuck about them love languages. Because the love languages ain't going to tell you how to live when shit is hitting you in the night season. When shit is hitting you in the dark season. When shit is hitting you in the raining season. When shit is dry. When you feel like giving up. You have to have discernment for times in marriage when it's hard. Because trust and believe, all of us been like, this damn woman getting on my nerves. Man, you have sat out in the car for 45 minutes because you like, what the fuck am I going to, what, what is, what is going to be happening when I get inside this damn house? You have been in a situation where it's like, okay, what is it going to be when I get in this house? I done fought out here in these streets. I done fought at the fucking job. What is it going to be when I get in this house? And then your kids is like, yo, why daddy sitting in the car? Because daddy is getting ready for the bullshit that's getting ready to happen as soon as he get in that house. So you have to begin to have a woman who is going to understand and have discernment for the season. And I'm going to tell you right now, man, create in your house an atmosphere of peace. One that you want to come home to. One that you don't have to vacation from. Create a life that you don't have to vacation from. Create an atmosphere of peace that you get energized when you step in. You got to have the right woman for that. She has to want that as well. Point number 12, and then I'm going to end with this. Good men fall when they don't handle the issues of their anger that turns to rage and to wrath. Good men fall when they don't handle their emotional issues that end up turning to rage and it turns to wrath. And what took years to build the fire of rage and the strength of wrath will demolish it in minutes. It might have took you 50 years to build it, but it's gone within five seconds. So I'm going to tell you right now, you got to begin to handle the rage and the wrath. The Bible says, be angry and sin not. There are a lot of people that try to tell you, you know, to get rid of your anger. No, man, you got to learn how to control anger. You got to learn that, that the discipline that comes with anger, because God was angry. There are certain men that got angry and solved problems because of the anger. So you have to be disciplined enough to make sure that that anger does not turn to rage or to wrath. What we saw at the Oscars was undealt issues that turned into rage, that turned into wrath. Issues that festered. Issues that were internalized, that turned into rage, that turned into wrath. And then we saw it explode in a public platform, on a public stage. And now look at it. I want to end with this, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, and I'm reading it out of the King James Version. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good, or whether it be evil. So 
Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. That means there needs to be an awareness with you, man. There needs to be an awareness that you can hear. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So I think a lot of times we as men, we have to be intentional with our listening, with our hearing. We have to be intentional with our discernment. Because if we are not intentional, then we make assumptions. Seriously. We got to begin to hear and to listen. Listen for what's not being said. And when you hear certain things, just know that you heard it. And there are certain things that you can't unhear. And that's the God knows truth. There are certain things that you can't unsee. So I'm telling you today that a good man falls, but he will, a good man falls seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. You will not utterly be destroyed. But you have to make the decision to get back up. For a just man falleth seven times and rises up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. And that is Proverbs 24 and verse 16. But we got to begin to hear the whole matter. Be aware of the people around you. Be aware of the woman that you're vetting. Be aware of the woman that's in your bed. Be aware of the woman that is in these streets. Because there are women, there are seducers out in the streets. There are Delilahs out in these streets. There's Jezebels out in these streets. And you're going to have to be aware that you make the difference between, okay, am I going to get a Ruth? Or am I going to get a Delilah? Do I want Queen Esther or do I want Queen Jezebel? Do I want Queen Vashti who wants the benefit of me? But don't want to come out to support me? Or do I want Queen Esther? Do I want a Deborah in my life? One who can judge, but still confers to me. Who still acknowledges me even though she's out here helping other people. And acting as a judge, even though her vocation is different from mine. So I'm telling you right now, men, you have to be aware. I don't want you to kill yourself over Ephesians 5. I don't want you to be the type of man that that is sitting in these houses of worship and not even the pastor is not even putting women on, on notice. No, they ain't putting them on notice in counseling They ain't putting them on notice from the pulpit And the reason why that is Is because you gotta look at If you start preaching hard messages People stop giving So if you start preaching uh, A male pastor starts preaching a message That's not clicking with women He ain't gonna get that much money So you as a man, you have to be aware, okay, is this pastor going to be instant in season and out of season? Which may mean not only is he instant in season and out of season from the pulpit, but also from the counseling. And when you're counseling, it has to be about you getting issues fixed, not who's right or who's wrong. Seriously. So I'm here to tell you this day. That we got to be aware. Seriously. And you need to be sitting in a church. And you need to be under a pastor. Who is not only going to hold the men accountable. But he's also going to hold the woman accountable. There is a responsibility that comes to both. And the women cannot be allowed to do what they want to do. Without any type of correction. Because you as a man, you can't do what you want to do without any type of correction. You just can't go like that. And so you need to be in a place where not only are they going to call you on the carpet, but they're going to call her on the carpet. Yes, you are first, you are the head. 
But God, he not only did he deal with the man, but he also dealt with the woman. So it can't be one-sided. It can't be one-sided preaching. It can't be one-sided counseling. No responsibility, no accountability put up, placed on her. She gets to do whatever she wants. That's not God. And after a while, you ain't going to be able to take it. And you're going to be like, yo, I'm out. So I'm telling you right now, seek out a place that's going to give you that type of balance. Seriously. But what I will tell you is this. You have to watch out for the spirit of feminism that has infiltrated the churches. Watch out for that. And this is the reason why I'm telling you what I told you about Ecclesiastes. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment and every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. But you got to hear, you got to be aware because God is going to bring everything into judgment. Consequence comes. Seriously, consequence comes. Consequence comes whether you've chosen a good woman or a bad woman. Consequence is going to come. And God is going to take into account what you did. What was the reason behind you ignoring the red flag? When you've asked God, did Lord show you? Is she the one? But you allowed yourself to be ignorant or you allowed yourself to just violate the red flag because she gave you sex at that time. Trust and believe, man, I've been there. God told me straight up, quit messing with a certain girl. And I said, Lord, I love you, but the, the sex. I mean, I was getting the type, I mean, the type of sex, yes, I was getting it. I was getting everything. Serious. Pussy mouth and ass. I was getting it all, man. But I paid for it. I paid, oh man, I paid for it. I'm serious. I paid for it. And I'm still paying for it. You know, so there's a whole lot of things that I want you guys to understand and be aware of. Because God is calling us to be men, but he's also calling us to hear. That's why he said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. And this, and this is what I want to give to you. You are a good man. But you don't have to stay down. And I'm going to end with that. I love you brothers and I want you to be blessed and I want you to be safe. Walk in the truth that makes you free every day. Follow Brother Leon on all social media outlets. 